Thank you. So uh, today we're going to be talking about CDC replication on Beam. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Pablo. I am a PMC member in Apache Beam, and I am also a software engineer at Google, and I work on Google Cloud Dataflow. My name is Dylan. I'm a strategic cloud engineer at Google, um, working on database replication and uh, Beam. So to start out, I'm going to talk a little bit about what CDC replication is. Uh, CDC refers to change data capture, which is really the process of recording DML and DDL events in a database. So uh, today, we're going to focus on DML replication. And any DDL that happens in the database will be handled um, as a change of JSON structure. So we'll dig into that a little bit more later. And oftentimes, databases can handle CDC in a number of different ways. For today, we're going to be referring to entire row replication. So a database which replicates the entire row for every change into a log file. Uh, other options might be writing just the updated rows or just the primary key that was updated. Uh, but for today, it'll be the full row. And uh, we're going to touch a little bit on consistency, which is another key component of CDC replication, both on the source and on the target. So the, there's a number of common problems around CDC replication. Uh, the first one that comes up is around database syntax. So how do we translate different data types from a source database into a target? And then how do we translate the data in those from a source to a target if there isn't a perfect alignment? So uh, does the database support one-to-one -one each column type? Uh, and then also, is there potential numeric overflow or an issue with different encodings between the two systems, and how do you handle those? As well as, oh, as, well as some operations. Uh, so we also are going to touch on ensuring schema alignment. So this is really DDL management. And we'll spend a good amount of time talking about how we manage DDLs in Beam. Uh, depending on what type of DDL we're talking about, there will be varying degrees of support. So you'll always support new tables and new columns, um, and then have some custom design for renames and drops. And generally, alter column type is not always going to be supported. Um, but these are the different sorts of DDLs that we might see. For managing consistency in the source, um, we would want to ensure all the records are either, so depending on the database, re records could either be written after they're committed or written as a transaction is applied and then committed in the actual CDC log. Uh, we'll be working with records that were committed at the time of the actual uh, write, write to the log, but um, there's definitely some more complexities here that can be added for certain CDC databases. And for managing consistency in the target, there's a number of different ways that we could approach it. Um, so that could be transactional consistency across the entire database. So at a transaction level, which might be across multiple tables, um, at a table level where you would pause uh, replication if a table was inconsistent, any rows had an issue for that table, so it would be accurate to a certain point in the log. Um, but what we're going to cover today is row level consistency and with that eventual consistency. So uh, the idea is that no records will be lost and we'll always make sure that order is maintained, but it may not be maintained at every specific point. Um, so the data will be eventually consistent, but not always perfectly consistent. And finally, 
uh, error handling in CDC replication. So this goes a little bit back to consistency, but how are we going to make sure that no data is ever lost? Um, should we block the stream if an error occurs and wait for some sort of manual intervention? Should we block just a table? Or should we store the data in a dead letter queue and then attempt to reprocess it later? Um, and our, our design focuses on a dead letter queue and making sure that uh, recycling data happens smoothly. All right, then. So, um... So we set out to build a beam pipeline that would enable us to um, to capture this sort of streams, right? And so um, we um, this beam pipeline that we developed, after all, is divided in roughly these three sections. Um, so first, there's a data input, and as data input, we had the requirements that we wanted to be able to receive data from you know, pops over Kafka as um, as message queues, and also Avro files published to um, to cloud storage. Um, after the data input, we we have a transform that we call the mapper, which is uh, in charge of um, mapping data input shapes into the output uh, shapes of the data to to send to a data warehouse. Um, in this case, BigQuery. And finally, the third stage is how we write the data to um, to this data warehouse. Um, now, specifically for data input, um, we had certain requirements that we wanted to achieve. So as we built this beam pipeline, we wanted to be able to support all of the database tables, so multiple tables of a database in a single pipeline. Um, and we also wanted this pipeline to be able to adapt to changes to the schema in the source without having to ask our users to restart the pipeline uh, so that these schemas would be updated. Uh, finally, we also wanted to support Kafka Pops of Anavro, as, as I mentioned. Now, something interesting about this, um, this data sources is um, we can have messages in them of different schemas. So Kafka has uh, a schema registry, Avro files, contain the schema under headers. Um, but so what do we do when, yes, we're able to consume records with different schemas from, from these inputs? Um, what do we do downstream on the table, right, on the pipeline? Uh, and so what, what we decided to go with is um, it, within the pipeline, the data is formatted as JSON. And so another advantage of JSON is that it allows us to apply certain transformations to the data, and maybe eventually support UDFs as well. Um, and so given this, uh, this implementation choices, um, we also wanted the input data to, um, to have full row replication. So we, would, uh, we should be able to reconstruct the full row from the source uh, as it goes through the pipeline. Um, the, we want the data to be fully sortable. So um, we want to be able to know exactly which is the latest change that we should apply onto a primary key. Um, and also, yeah, each, each data point should have a way to identify the, the schema on the source. Now, after we read the input data, we have this mapper transform. And this mapper transform is in charge of handling not just uh, the mapping from input data shape to output data shape, but also um, dealing with DDL. So it's able to find a schema uh, in, in an external data source. It's able to, to figure out, okay, do we have a new table? Do we need to create a new table on the, on, on the destination uh, data warehouse that we're writing to? And it's also in charge of figuring out what are the primary keys. And this transform is um, it's interesting, and Dylan will go into detail about some, um, just how it works. Um, and anyway, after the mapping transform, so we have the input, we have our mapping transform, and then we have uh, our transforms that allow us to write to a data warehouse, again, in, uh, in, which is BigQuery in this case. So on the left side, we have uh, write to a staging table. And so this is just a normal BigQuery write where we take our rows 
um, and our rows contain the full row on the source table, and it also con they also contain some metadata about the type of change uh, in the source. So we write this to a uh, to t partition tables on the destination, um, and then so that's a staging table that allows us to keep kind of a log of all the changes historically, and uh, we the, on the right hand side we have. Uh, we issue merges onto a replica table. And so what emerges, it's, um, it's an operation, a common operation in data warehouses where you define a statement that allows, us, as, allows you to do a table join. So we join the, um, the historical change log table, the staging table against the replica table. And depending on the results of that join, we're able to apply large scale mutations onto the replica table. And so basically, we join them on the primary keys and we say, OK, what was the latest change that was applied to this primary key? And then we apply that change onto the replica table. Um, and so this is why we need rows to be able to be sorted, uh, because we need to be able to find the latest change to a specific primary key and all of the latest changes to those primary keys in a table. Um, and this is also eventually consistent, because if we have late data, then uh, we may not know what was the latest change um, to the table, and we'll apply a slightly older change. Um, now, something good about working with partition table on the, on the staging table side is that you, our users will be able to decide, OK, how quickly do we want to be able to clean up our old historical data? Uh, from partition tables. Um, now, one more interesting thing about using, issuing merges is uh, merges require a, you know, a table scan of the staging table. And so what we, um, and they're issued every certain amount of time. So we, we had to balance how often do we issue merges? Uh, so how, what's the end-to-end -end latency of the pipeline with uh, what's the cost of the pipeline? So if we issue too many merges, the cost will balloon, right? So um, we also looked into having a design that allowed us to issue merges whenever it was necessary, but not do it if we didn't need to. Um, right. Perfect. So now we're just going to jump into handling DDL, um, which will be a little bit of a deep dive into the mapper that Pablo mentioned. So. Uh, a table row will enter the mapper. Um, this is basically a JSON field with whatever data comes through. And once that happens, all the fields in that table row are going to be compared to a cached BigQuery table. So uh, what we're going to look for are any new fields that are not currently in BigQuery. Uh, any dropped columns will be ignored. Um, so they could be identified, but rather than try to handle them, we're just going to allow that data to become null in BigQuery. And any data type with its type altered is going to potentially cause misalignment. So that is the one form of DDL that we don't intend to support. Once we have processed that table row and seen that new fields exist, we're going to try and discover their type. So we'll actually make a call out to the source database. And then uh, we've added logic that will apply a transformation from that source to the target type. So we would translate a MySQL type to a BigQuery type. And uh, if no type is specified, we're just going to default to a string. Um, we also have some future options of defaulting to the type of the value itself, but um, a string is safest. And this type conversion is then going to be applied. And the BigQuery table will be uh, prepared. Uh, next, we're going to apply those changes in BigQuery and then wait for the table to finish its DDL. Um, if it succeeds, then we're going to reset the cache and continue. And if it fails, we're also going to reset the cache. And inside of the mapper, there is a 
retry mechanism and it'll be a X number of times. Um, so we'll retry a configurable number of times. Generally, if there's an issue, it means that there was um, some race condition between a different worker and it'll go through on the next attempt. So it's not a, a huge number of retries that we need here. And finally, we're gonna validate and cleanse the data to match the types that we've aligned with in BigQuery. So uh, if a Unix timestamp that's invalid comes through, we might need to clean that into a timestamp. Um, and we know that it's a timestamp in BigQuery, so we know to make that change. Same idea with an array or a map, which might need to be dropped to JSON before it's pushed in as a string. Um, I mentioned the BigQuery table caching, and this is a really important aspect to ensure that we have a really scalable solution. Um, so the table is cached, and that cache is gonna refresh periodically no matter what. The idea there is that this is a streaming pipeline, and if someone made a manual change, we want that to be taken up automatically. So every five minutes, it'll go and it'll take up any new changes. And also, if there are any DDL statements or errors um, caused by DDL, then we will also refresh that cache. That way, one worker running a DDL will apply to all workers um, basically through a failure. And that's really what we're doing here is uh, we're allowing the ASCII compliance in BigQuery to ensure one of the DDLs will succeed, the other will fail, and then retry. And um, since it's a limited number of workers who are going to be competing here, it wasn't a big issue. All right. And now, um, how do we handle errors? Um, we do it via the letter Q. So throughout this pipeline, uh, be it the input or, or the mapping or writing to the staging table, there, it's possible for us to have errors. Um, and so we, we have some retries for, for errors, but we, um, whenever errors are you know, permanent, we, we ensure to write the data and all of the error information to a dead letter queue. Um, and so this dead letter Q um, should eventually be configurable, but initially we're, we're designing a dead letter Q that will be just files in GCS. And so whenever there's a failure, um, it will be written to files in GCS and it will be eventually reconsumed by the pipeline. Uh, but while the, the files are in GCS, users can also uh, go and observe um, what sort of failures we had and uh, take action uh, if necessary. Right. And... Perfect. And just to wrap up, um, all of this is available. Uh, so you can see the CDC components that we've built uh, over in the links and the slides that will be provided. And uh, we're planning to soon release a Debezium to BigQuery template, which will use all of these features that we've described to really automate the entire ETL process there. Um, this has been really focused on OLAP databases in terms of the target, but we also wanted to call out that uh, considerations for OLAP are also coming soon as well. And we'll be on Slack um, also, and there's our Twitters and emails if you want to contact us. Um, I don't know if we have time for questions, but uh, let's. Two questions, but we're almost at the end of the time. Um, I think, yeah, there's one question here. Um, what would be a common source for these uh, CDC streams to come from? I don't know if you mentioned that in the beginning. Yeah, so um, generally any OLTP database that has a transactional log. So uh, Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, SQL Server, uh, those are really the 
the core, uh, but many more databases will have a CDC log and would potentially be bits. And another quick question. Since most CDC streams require strict ordering per key, how do you handle the out of orderness in your pipeline given Beam itself doesn't provide any ordering guarantee? Yeah, so in this case, um, in this case, we, because we're working with, uh, with BigQuery, we're kind of delaying dealing with the ordering onto, uh, onto the merge statement. And so what we, what we're doing, our requirement is that records can be um, sorted by, by their fields, and then we'll write them to the staging table, and that's how we'll, you know, we'll use that mm -hmm. uh, to merge onto the replica table, and that's how we deal with ordering. Um, for uh, for OL, OLTP um, cases where we're, we're writing to an OLTP database, and um, we'll probably have to um, be much more cautious on on that. And yeah, we'll uh, cool. We'll tell you more later. <laughs> later. All right, cool. <laughs> that okay. Then we have to wrap up. Thank you very much, Pablo and Dylan. And um, I see you around. All right. Thank you.